The robotics industry just had its chat GPT moment, and humanoid robots could be here much sooner than we think. And while everyone is trying to find the winner between robots like Figure 01 or Tesla's Optimus, I think they're looking in the wrong place. So in this episode, I'll break down a few huge innovations in AI for robots and explain why the biggest robotics companies on Earth might be ones that never sell a single robot. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. First things first, I'm not here to waste your time. Here's everything I'll be talking about in this episode. The advantages of humanoid robots, which parts of these robots are actually worth investing in, the chat GPT moment for robots and why it's such a big deal, and I'll try to mention the major players in each section along the way. All right, let's jump right into the advantages of humanoid robots. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I focus on investing in technology platforms that other businesses pay to build on top of. But when it comes to robots, there's more than one kind of platform. There's a whole technology stack. The part of the stack that has the media's attention right now is the chassis, the robot's body. And there's a lot of good reasons to make a robot that's shaped like a human. Today, industrial robotics is a massive market that serves many different verticals, like automotive, drug manufacturing, and even making microchips. That's right, robots are already building chips that go into other robots to build even more powerful chips. Anyway, the global industrial robotics market is expected to almost triple in size over the next nine years, which is a compound annual growth rate of over 11%. But by some estimates, the global humanoid robot market is expected to more than 30x in size by 2030, which works out to a massive growth rate of over 60% per year over the next six years. That's because there are currently millions of different kinds of robots, each designed to do a limited set of tasks in very specific environments. And that comes with a lot of challenges, like finding the right experts to program a specific kind of robot, or only being able to repair or replace one with a similar model. Humanoid robots provide a universal solution to many of these kinds of challenges. For example, we know that humanoid robots will be able to perform a huge number of tasks in almost any environment because humans already do that today. So any company that can build one robotic platform with human levels of versatility could deploy it in virtually every market on Earth. That's a multi-trillion dollar opportunity, which is why everyone is trying to find the next big winner by looking at companies like Boston Dynamics, Tesla, and Figure. And in my opinion, that's the exact wrong place to be looking. Let me explain why. Think about Tesla's vehicles today and what separates them from every other car on the road. It's not the tires or the touchscreen. People often call Tesla's robots on wheels because they have cameras connected to a full self-driving chip. So the first part of the stack that I think investors should be looking at is the computers powering these robots. These computers need to be small, lightweight, and low power while still being able to process large amounts of data coming from multiple sensors, make decisions based on that data, and then send the right commands and controls to different parts of the robot in real time. And the smaller the robot, the smaller and more lightweight this computer needs to be. I recently made a video breaking down NVIDIA's new Blackwell GPUs, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. In it, I pointed out that Blackwell isn't just a chip for data centers. NVIDIA is also putting chips based on the Blackwell architecture in their platform for autonomous vehicles called DriveThor, as well as their new compute platform for humanoid robots called Jetson Thor. NVIDIA's DriveThor platform brings together a lot of functions that are currently distributed across many different computers in a car, like automated driving, parking assistance, driver monitoring, and even the navigation and infotainment systems. And the purpose-built Blackwell GPU inside DriveThor gives the car a thousand teraflops of compute power so that it can take in data from every sensor, feed it through a generative AI model to predict the right actions to take next, and then send the commands and controls out to the rest of the car. One big reason that investors might want to pay attention to NVIDIA's Drive platform is because it powers Mercedes-Benz's Drive Pilot, which recently hit level 3 autonomy, while Tesla's full self-driving software is still at level 2 at the time of this recording. Just a quick refresher, level 2 autonomy is really partial automation like following the car in front of you or staying within lane markers. But the driver always has to be ready to take control of the car at level two. Level three autonomy is the first level where you don't drive the car, the car drives you, sometimes. Level three is conditional autonomous driving. And in Mercedes case, there are still a lot of conditions, like needing to stay under 40 miles per hour, 
only during the day and only on specific roads. But when those conditions are met and drive pilot is engaged, the driver can legally take their eyes off the road and the responsibility shifts to the vehicle, depending on local laws. Don't get me wrong here. I'm excited to see how soon Tesla can hit true autonomy, but now that they've deleted 300,000 lines of rules-based code and switched to the same kinds of AI models as everyone else, they may not be the only game in town for full self-driving very long, even with their massive data advantage. Speaking of data, here's some data that's blowing my mind. There were over 2.5 million cases of online fraud and over a million cases of online identity theft in just the US last year alone. If you're getting more spam phone calls, texts, or emails lately, these online scammers might already have your information too. That's why I decided to join DeleteMe, the sponsor of this video. DeleteMe is a hands-free subscription service that will remove your personal information from hundreds of online data brokers. You just sign up, enter your information, and let their experts get to work. DeleteMe has reviewed 25,000 listings for me since I joined a few months ago. After seven days, you get your first privacy report, and that shows you everything they've removed so far. I just got my third one, and Delete Me removed over a hundred more pieces of my personal information. And not just my name and address, but my fiance and my mom too. And I love that after they remove your information, they'll rescan these websites regularly. You even get your own privacy advisor if you want to talk to a real person and make a custom removal request. If you care about your data and your family's privacy, you can get 20% off any consumer plan with my code SYMBOL20 at joindeleteme.com slash SYMBOL20, which I'll also link for you below. And thank you to Delete Me for supporting the channel and keeping my family's data safe. All right, so autonomous cars are really robots on wheels. And like I said at the start of this video, the biggest robotics companies on earth might not actually sell a single robot themselves. NVIDIA doesn't make cars, they make the computing platform that goes inside them. NVIDIA has another computing platform called Jetson, which powers robots of all sizes today. Jetson computers come in different form factors so that robotics companies can get the right size, weight, power, and performance depending on their needs. And while I was at GTC, NVIDIA announced a new version of Jetson specifically for humanoid robots. It's called Jetson Thor, and it comes with a high-performance CPU cluster, a separate processor for safety, and another special-purpose Blackwell GPU. Blackwell has a few key features that I think make it a great chip for humanoid robots. First, it performs AI inference a whopping 30 times faster than Hopper, which is NVIDIA's previous generation of GPUs. That massive leap in performance means that robots can run larger AI models without needing to connect back to a server and they can run them faster while spending less power. Second, these chips have a built-in engine for reliability, availability, and serviceability. That means Blackwell checks itself for faults and sends out health and status updates. Imagine the time and money it would take to check the chip in every single factory robot or self-driving car. I think that chips in edge devices will start offering way more diagnostics features like these in the future. And third, whenever Nvidia does release a new update or optimization, every Blackwell chip will benefit. For example, NVIDIA came out with a piece of software last fall called Tensor RT LLM, which doubled the inference performance on large language models for their GPUs. That was a big deal for their server chips, but that same update would also help robots run larger AI models using less power. All right, so far we've talked about the brain inside the robot, and NVIDIA is definitely not the only player in this market. Huge publicly traded companies like Tesla, AMD, Qualcomm, and Intel's Mobileye also develop different kinds of embedded chips for robots and self-driving cars, all of which I've covered many times in previous videos. But let me know in the comments below if you want to see another deep dive on any of them. I might make another Tesla versus Nvidia video now that Tesla's FSD software has reached a new milestone. Speaking of which, let's talk about AI training next, because this is where the ChatGPT moment for robots is happening. Like I said earlier, there are millions of different kinds of robots, each designed and programmed to do very specific tasks in very specific environments. That's a lot of highly specialized work. At the same time, there are already huge amounts of video tutorials and instruction manuals online, covering virtually every topic known to man. The problem is that they were made by humans for humans, but since humanoid robots are constructed the same way, they could learn from this data as well if only there was a way for them to make sense of it all. 
That's the chat GPT moment for robots. Companies are developing not just large language models, but large action models, where the input is a video or a text prompt, but the outputs are the commands and controls for a robot. That means that robots can learn by imitation, just like humans do today. Hey, are you sure that this isn't the start of some robot apocalypse? Huh, okay. Well, our robot overlords say that there's nothing to worry about. Anyway, right now, many of the companies building foundational models are either still private, like OpenAI and Covariant, or they're already massive and do many different things, like Google, Meta Platforms, and now NVIDIA. While I was at GTC, NVIDIA announced Project Groot, a general purpose foundation model for humanoid robots. The next generation of robotics will likely be a humanoid robotics. We now have the necessary technology to imagine generalized human robotics. In a way, human robotics is likely easier, and the reason for that is because we have a lot more training data that we can provide the robots, because we are constructed in a very similar way. It could be in video form, it could be in virtual reality form. We then created a gym for it called Isaac Reinforcement Learning Gym, which allows the humanoid robot to learn how to adapt to the physical world, and then an incredible computer, the same computer that's going to go into a robotic car, this computer will run inside a humanoid robot called Thor. It's designed for transformer engines. The soul of NVIDIA, the intersection of computer graphics, physics, artificial intelligence. It all came to bear at this moment. The name of that project, General Robotics 003. I know, super good. Super good. So Groot's inputs are text, video, or live demonstrations, which means we will eventually be able to train robots on the fly, simply by showing them what to do on site in real time, and then giving them reinforcement learning from human feedback as we go along. Again, that's pretty much how humans learn from each other today. But this also means that the robot's AI model can be trained in digital environments as well. At GTC, NVIDIA announced major updates to their physics simulation environment for GPU-based reinforcement learning, which they call Isaac Jim. Inside a virtual gym, the training data for AI models can be millions or even billions of real or synthesized examples of how expert humans and other robots would perform a task. That's important for a lot of reasons, like letting companies generate tons of examples of edge cases that would be rare in the real world. One of the reasons that Tesla collecting billions of miles of driving data gave them such a big advantage was that they had more videos covering real life edge cases on the road than any other company. But they also have a powerful simulation engine to repeat those edge cases as necessary. That's what let Tesla train their self-driving AI to be so much more advanced than any other automaker, and that's the big idea behind NVIDIA's digital gym for robots. Then, once an AI model is trained on all this data, it can be tested in the same digital environment, and the updated model only gets uploaded back to the chips inside the physical robots when it shows that it can do the task expertly, safely, and reliably. And then, the cycle can repeat again and again. And now we've come full circle. I talked about some of the big advantages of humanoid robots, the chips inside the robots for AI inference, and in data centers for AI training, and the chat GPT moment for robotics as training transitions to imitation learning thanks to generative AI. And when I was at GTC, NVIDIA announced big innovations across every layer of the robotics tech stack, but they're far from the only players on the field. Many high-profile companies are working on embedded chips for robots and self-driving cars, from Tesla and Intel to Qualcomm and AMD, as well as many private companies and startups. And there are a lot of foundational models, training services, and AI data centers being built to support them by massive companies like Google, Meta Platforms, Microsoft, and Amazon. And the best part is, it's still anybody's game. We're at the very start of the generative AI era, especially for robotics, which is why it's so important to understand the science behind the stocks. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is ticker symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.